Ah, oh, hello there, explorer. You took me by surprise there, but not to worry. There's plenty of digging to go around. Today, we will be digging up all we know about Subnautica's fossils. So let's get started. Ah, amazing. Look at this first fossil we have here. Research specimen Theta, also known as Carnivore Theta to its friends. Clocking in at 1,000 years old, Theta rests inside the disease research facility where the architects were studying for a cure for the Kara outbreak. The environment surrounding Theta suggests it was kept alive in containment for research purposes for months or even years. It's likely that our unfortunate fishy friend here died when the research facility was destroyed, either being killed by the destruction of the facility itself or simply being left to die once the architects abandoned the planet. Although there is a slight conflict in the sources here, as the PDA and environment surrounding Theta suggests it was alive while under study, but architect specimen research data suggests that they were studying the remains rather than the living creature. It's possible that Theta died of Kara while in containment, as the architects noted it had some degree of resistance to the disease. Either way, we just can't say for sure how how Theta died. Fast forward a thousand years to the current day and it is assumed that Theta's species has gone extinct, as no other remains or living versions of the creature can be found. But it's not all doom and gloom for you Theta lovers out there, as the creature is distantly related to five of the living creatures that can be found on the planet today. And two of these must be the Sea Emperor and the Sea Dragon, as they both have arms, right? Well, wrong, actually. Theta's distinct bone structure means it's highly unlikely to have any relation to the Sea Dragon or the Sea Emperor, and this difference is even more obvious when it comes to their arms. The sea dragon skeleton found in the Lost River shows that the sea dragon has a ball and socket joint arm, while Theta has two fused bones and a gliding joint. Theta can also give you a high five where the sea dragon can't, as it's stuck with only four fingers on each hand. As Theta's arms face backwards when compared to the sea dragons, it would be impossible for the creature to use them to pick up objects, so it's possible its arms were used like a sea turtle's flippers to help it move through the water. Research specimen Theta has twin sets of eyes on either side of its skull, with the front eye being much larger and more developed than the second one. This trend of two sets of eyes is continued in some of the creature's descendants, the blighter, the sand shark and the biter. Although this trend of one eye being bigger than the other seems to have been slowly bred out of the gene pool, as these creatures all have four eyes of identical sizes. Theta's other descendant in the bone shark only has two eyes, suggesting that the bone shark evolutionary diverged from Theta much earlier than its other relatives. It's also possible that Theta could have had two antennae due to these small holes above its front eyes, similar to to its descendant Blighter and Biter cousins. Theta has a tough external shell in addition to an internal skeleton, a feature that is replicated in the sand and bone sharks. This would have given Theta a greater degree of defence, but would have made it slower and less manoeuvrable. Come on my friend, let's venture deeper, but keep an eye out for any long laid architect traps. I'm sure they wouldn't like us disturbing their research. Wow, just look at this. This is the ancient skeleton which can be found outside the Lost River laboratory cache. Similar to research specimen Theta, only one of these fossils is known to exist. Whoa, stay back, don't get too close, it looks like the architects took an interest in our old friend here and set up a lab nearby to study it. Although this must be completely unrelated to the Kara outbreak as this ancient skeleton is over 1 million years old. The PDA and the very large teeth indicate that the ancient skeleton was a massive carnivorous leviathan that would have been larger than any living creature encountered on the planet today. Although it's hard to say exactly how big the creature was or what it might have looked like when it was alive, as we don't know how much of the skeleton is actually visible to us and how much is still buried beneath the ground. This piece of concept art from the game's development might have played a part in the creature's design, but we don't know for sure. The ancient skeleton is made of a number of overlapping bone plates which appear to be an extension of its spine and ribs, the outlines of which can be seen from inside the skeleton, whereas Theta and the bone and sand sharks have dermal armour, which are hard plates attached to the skin but not directly to the skeleton itself, like an armadillo. This makes the ancient skeleton more similar to a turtle or a tortoise than any of the living armoured creatures on 4546 b or even research specimen Theta. This suggests that the ancient skeleton doesn't have any living descendants today, as no other creature on 4546b shares this type of armour, although it is possible that over the million years since the creature died that this feature simply evolved out of the gene pool. Another interesting feature of the ancient skeleton is its six eye sockets, which are not found on any other living creature on the planet. Although as with research specimen Theta, there are a number of creatures that have four eyes, so it's possible that the ancient skeleton shares some blood with them, but this is unlikely due to the difference in the bone structure of the skeletons. The creature's skull has 18 teeth in total, with the largest being over 2 metres in height. It's possible for a human to swim through the gaps where its missing teeth once were. The creature's upper jaw lacks teeth in the middle, instead having a thin flat surface, which could have been used for slicing soft-bodied creatures. Hey, what on earth are you doing? I told you don't get close to it. Good job this thing is very much dead. The ancient skeleton has a number of holes running down the side of its body, but we don't quite know what for. It's possible that these exist to simply lighten the weight of the skeleton to make the creature 
less heavy and more manoeuvrable. Or they could be spaces where flippers or limbs once existed, although the structure of the openings does not indicate that they were ball and socket joints, so that probably rules out the ancient skeleton being a terrifying spider-like creature. We simply can't say what these holes were used for or how the ancient skeleton moved when it was alive, as we don't have enough information. Although the thickness of the skeleton indicates it probably wasn't a very fast swimmer due to its weight and size, but it's safe to say the planet's oceans when this creature was alive would have had to have been very different to support life forms of this size, with much more open geography and many more creatures of Leviathan class. Ah, it seems your little swim through the skeleton's mouth has set off an architect trap. I think the ceiling's gonna cave in. Let's get out of here. Wow, just look at the size of that. This must be the planet's ultimate apex predator, the gargantuan fossil. Located in the bone fields, this skeleton's sheer size means the whole subsection of the Lost River is named after it. Dated at almost 3 million years old, this skeleton belongs to an eel-like creature that was much larger than both the sea dragon and the sea emperor leviathans combined, and that's only counting the third of the unburied skeleton that we can actually see in the Lost River, consisting of a skull and 16 pairs of giant ribs, with just its skull alone clocking at 100 metres long, which is almost as long as the entire body of a sea dragon leviathan. The reptilian skull may indicate that this was a common distant ancestor for the sea dragon and sea emperor leviathans, although this cannot be confirmed for sure. It's possible that the gargantuan leviathan shares a similar skeletal structure to the sea dragon with its inverted rib cage, but it's also possible the bones have just been turned upside down over time. The unburied portion of the skeleton is 402 metres in length, with the PDA estimating that the creature's skeleton is only one third complete, meaning the full gargantuan leviathan would have measured between 1100 and 1500 metres long. Try fitting that in your museum. The remains themselves are so large that an entire ecosystem has sprung up around them, with plants and coral growing on the bones themselves. Even our friends the architects have taken an interest in the creature by taking small samples from its ribcage. While this creature was alive, it's unlikely it could even live inside the crater due to the sheer size of its body, meaning it would have lived in what is now the void, probably residing hundreds of miles away from the crater at any given time. So how did it actually get into the Lost River in the first place? The intact nature of the bones and their configuration leads the PDA to suggest the gargantuan leviathan could never have fit into this space under normal circumstances, suggesting that the geography of the planet must have shifted around the fossil over the millennia, enclosing it within the Lost River. It's possible that the Lost River used to be much larger when the creature entered the area, and over time the tunnel may have collapsed and become more enclosed. It's possible that the tunnel the Leviathan entered through is being blocked by its massive body, which would explain why only a third of it is visible. The remains also don't indicate a cause of death. As no obvious injuries can be seen, it's possible the Leviathan simply died of old age or of some other natural cause. The gargantuan fossil's mouth is so large that it can fit an entire cyclops inside of it, with its lower front teeth measuring at 11.4 metres and its upper front teeth measuring at 10.3 metres. And it's a good job we aren't hiding from it, as its biggest eye socket alone measures 9.7 metres. Thank god this creature was extinct by the time we got here, my friend. As not much is known about what life was like outside the crater, it's not clear what this creature would normally feed on or if that prey still exists. If the gargantuan leviathan was alive today, it would prey on reef bat leviathans for breakfast, ghost leviathans for lunch, sea dragons for dinner, and sea emperors for dessert. It's possible that when gargantuan leviathans roamed the planet that they may have also preyed on the ancient skeleton leviathan that we dug up earlier. There were likely very few gargantuan leviathans around at any given time, with the species having a long lifespan and a low reproduction rate, as it would require a huge amount of food to fuel a beast of this size, and if there were too many gargantuan leviathans, they would quickly hunt their own food source to extinction. Unlike the other fossils we've dug up on our travels, there is actually two specimens of the gargantuan leviathan, with a much smaller but identical skull found in the ghost forest and smaller ribs found in the entrance to the Lost River Junction. Whether this juvenile was related to the adult or just happens to be close by due to coincidence is unknown. Come on my friend, let's get these specimens back to the surface for further study. Wait, what? What do you mean you only just managed to survive the trip down here because of all the reapers? Before we set off, you'll have to watch this video next to ensure we get back to the surface in one piece.